Hi, I'm Megan, and today I'm going to show you how to play Pie Town by Renegade Game Studios for two to four players, ages 14 and up, and it plays in about 60 to 90 minutes. This is a game I'm renting from my local game store. To set up, you're going to place the market board, the scoreboard, and the orchard nearby so everyone can reach it. I'm going to be setting up for a two-player game. Give each player a store board. Give them four dice in the color of their choosing. There is purple, green, red, and yellow. Place two of the dice at a level one to the side of your board. Place the other two at a level two and a level three in the break room. Now give each player a dry erase board and a dry erase marker. Give each player a secret recipe box, a stack of pies in their color, Three upgrade tokens. You're going to place the apple upgrade token on the eight space of the storage room. The lock upgrade token on the second space of the bake room. And the chef hats upgrade token of the one space in the kitchen. Then give each player three apples one of each color, red, green, and yellow, and place it in their storeroom. Give each player a pie score marker and place it on the zero space of the scoreboard. Place this rolling pin round marker on round one. Place these 50 point markers on the scoreboard. You'll need three of them for each player. So in a two-player game, I'm placing out six of them. Assign the starting player randomly and give them the chef hat. Now each player is going to look in the ingredient bag and choose three ingredients for their secret recipe that they will keep secret. Your secret recipe needs to be two apples and one rare ingredient. The rare ingredients are strawberries, bananas, and pumpkin. So I may choose pumpkin for my rare ingredient and two red apples. Or I could do a red and a green apple. Place those three ingredients in your secret recipe box without letting the other players see. Now you're going to take randomly from the bag two ingredients and place them on the hexes of the orchard tree. In a four player game, you will place two of them on all the hexes. In a three player game, you will place them on all hexes except for this four player hex here. And in a two player game, you will not place them on the four player hex or the three player hex. And now you are ready to begin. On your turn, you will place one of your worker dice on any available action space. Once all players have placed all of their worker dice and their break room is empty, everyone will recall their workers to the break room, adjusting the level of the dice depending on the action they took. Then you will return all re remaining ingredients from the orchard tree and put them back in the bag. And then you will draw two new ingredients and place them on each hex. Then you're going to move the round marker up one and you will assign the starting player. If nobody has taken the first player marker that round, then the starting player goes to the next person in clockwise order. After nine rounds, a final bake-off will occur. 
and any unsold pies will score points. And you'll tally up all the points, and whoever has the most points is the winner. One of the actions you can take is placing your worker on a space in the orchard. You can now take any ingredients from the three surrounding hexes. The number of ingredients you take is based off of the level of the dice. So in this case, I can take three ingredients from any of the three adjacent hexes. So I might take the strawberry, this banana, and a red apple, and place them in your storage room. If your apple upgrade token is on the eight space here, you can only hold up to eight items in your storage room. You can never take more than eight ingredients. If your upgrade marker is on the 14 space, you can hold up to 14 items in your storage room. Another action you can take is going to the bake room. In the bake room, you will bake pies. The number of pies you will bake is based off of the value of the die. So in this case, you can bake two pies. The different pies you can bake are shown up here. You can bake your secret recipe. You could bake using two rare ingredients and one apple, or you can use two apples and one rare ingredient or three apples. The stars represent rare ingredients which are the strawberries, bananas, and pumpkins. So I could take my banana and strawberry and one apple, and then I can take three apples and bake a pie here and a pie here. When you're baking pies, you have to show the other players your ingredients and you have to tell them which pie you're making. It's recommended that you, before you show them the pies, you mix them up in your hand so they don't know which ingredients belong to which recipe. You don't want them to find out what your secret recipe is. So if you're going to bake your secret recipe, you should at least bake one other pie so that the other players can't figure out what your secret recipe is. So I might hand them this, throw them back in the bag, and then place my two pies on the very bottom of that column, like so. So if I were to bake my secret recipe, which is two red apples and a pumpkin, First, I would need to have those ingredients here in my storage. So say I was baking two pies with what I have here in my storage. I have enough ingredients to bake the secret recipe and this uh, recipe here, which is two apples and a rare ingredient. So they're essentially using the same ingredients. Both recipes use two apples and one rare ingredient. So I mix them up in my hand, show them to the other players. So this way, you know, they can't figure out, you know, which of the apples belong to which recipe and which rare ingredient belongs to which recipe. I tell them I'm making the secret recipe in this one, and then I place out the pies. And put the ingredients back in the bag. Your opponents will also be placing pies here on this board. In a two player game, you can only bake three pies per column. In a three player game, you can bake four pies per column. And in a four player game, you can use all the spaces. Another action you can do is go to the market to sell pies. So you can place your dice here and sell all pies in one column. So 
So I can pick any column I want and sell all the pies in that column. If I were to choose this column, you're also selling, you know, you're selling all the pies in that column. So I would also be selling my opponent's pies and they will also get points. So if I sold this column, my opponent gets three points for each of their pies for a total of six. I would get three points for this pie Plus you get points to the value of the die. So I would get three points for this pie and an additional two points for my number of dice. After you sell pies, you remove them from the board, give the pie tokens back to that player, score the points, and then you get to draw two random ingredients from the bag and place them in your storage. If I were to go here, I'm selling the bottom row and only the bottom row. You cannot sell these other rows. So if I were to sell this bottom row, I would get seven, four, and two, plus two for my dice. Then I would remove them from the board. These pies drop down. And then I get to draw two random ingredients from the bag. In a two player game, you can only use the first two slots. In a three player game, you can use both spaces here, but only one space here. In a four player game, you can use all the spaces. Another place you can go is to the pie convention here. At the pie convention, you can either assign a new starting player. So I could take this token back or I can change one ingredient of my secret recipe. So if you feel like one of your opponents has figured out one or more of your ingredients of your secret recipe, you can change one ingredient. So I can change out this red apple for a green one. And you would take these tokens from the bag, not the orchard. You could also go here to the upgrade room. For the upgrade room, you have to place at least a level two or higher. You cannot place a one here. In the upgrade room, that allows you to upgrade one of these three rooms here, your bake, storage, or kitchen. If you're upgrading the bake room, you just remove this lock token. So that way you'll be able to bake two pies well, you'll be able to use this action twice in a round. Or you could upgrade your kitchen and slide the chef hat over to the two space. This means that when you bake pies, you get one point per pie. So when I baked two pies and put them on the market, I get two points for making those pies. If you upgrade it, you get two points per pie. So I would have got four points for baking those pies. Or you can upgrade your storage so that you can hold up to 14 ingredients. And the final space you can go to is the higher, which is this space here. And you have to place at least a three or higher for this area. What that does is it gives you another dice and you would place the dice here at a level one and you will get to use this dice next round. One more thing you can do is called spying. So you can spy on your opponents that are at the market board or that are at the orchard. So if you have a dice that is greater value than theirs, for example, I have a three, they have a two. I can place my dice on top of theirs and spy on a secret ingredient of theirs. So what this does is one, it gives you information about your opponent's secret recipe and two, it allows you to um, go to this space so, you know, this space is already taken and in a two player game, you can't use this space. So if you need to go sell pies, you can place yours on top. That lets you take that action. Plus um, P 
peek at one of their ingredients. The number of ingredients that you get to peek at is based off of the difference between the dice. So there's a difference of one here, so I would only get to peek at one ingredient of theirs. So let's say they had these. Right. So here's their secret recipe. I don't know what it is. What I do is I open the box. Make sure you open it away from you so that you can't see what's in it. Pull out the number of ingredients according to the dice. So in this case, one. Then I secretly look at it without showing them. They're not allowed to know which of their ingredients I spied on. So I look at it. Then I put it back without looking at the rest of the ingredients and give them back their box. Then on your board here, you can go ahead and mark that you know that information of theirs. If this is a 2 and this is a 4, I can peek at 2 of their ingredients. And if this was a 2 and a 5, I can peek at all 3 of their ingredients. You can only spy on the market and the orchard. So you can place your dice on top of the dice that are here or on top of the dice that are here. After you spy, you can then take that action if you wish. So if you still want to sell pies, you could, but you don't have to. If you go to the orchard and you spy, after you spy, you can take your ingredients from the orchard if you want to, or you don't have to. When you're recalling your workers to the break room, you'll notice that some of these boards have these plus minus symbols here. Those symbols are, ours, are also at the pie convention and the orchard. What that means is when you recall your workers to the break room. So for example, if I recall my three here to back to my break room, I'm going to increase the value of the die by one. So every dice that's in the orchard will always get increased by one at the end of the round. So I change this three to a four and put it in my break room. If you've gone to this upgrade section, you're going to minus the dice by one. If you're baking, you get to plus the dice by one. If you go to the higher, you're going to decrease the dice by two, which is why your dice has to be at least a value of three. So this three would change to a one. And then I also get this one. So now I have three dice instead of two. If you go to the pie convention and you've taken this action here, which is assigning a new starting player, you increase the dice by one. But if the action you took was changing one ingredient of your secret recipe, you decrease the dice by one. The dice from the market don't change value. They stay the same. So if this was a four, I'd keep it a four and put it in my break room. When you're baking pies, if you know your opponent's secret recipe, you can also bake their recipe. So what you would do is you would show what you think is their secret recipe to that opponent. So I would show them. Obviously, you won't let the other players see this. And they will have to say whether or not this is their recipe. If you're right, you get to bake their secret recipe. Place it there get your points for baking the pie. And um, if you're wrong, and they don't have to tell you how many you got wrong, they just tell you if you're wrong or not. If you're wrong, you have to discard those ingredients and you do not get to bake the pie. After you finish your ninth round, you're gonna go into the final bake off. During the final bake-off, you're going to sell all of the unsold pies that are still left on the market board. You sell the pies for one point each. So purple would get three points, 
and green would get three points. Then you have the option of guessing your opponents. You can guess each of your opponents secret recipe. So you will pull from the bag what you think their secret recipe is. And you can do this for each player. So I pull from the bag. I show it to them and they say yes or no, whether or not it's their secret recipe. And they must tell you if you are if you are wrong, they must tell you how many you got right. They don't need to tell you which ingredients you got right though. They just need to tell you if you got one right, two, or all three, or zero. Then you get to bake that pie, which gives you another point. And you would score points based on the number of um, ingredients you guessed correctly. So if you've guessed three out of three correct, you're gonna get four points. If you got two out of three correct, you'll get two points. One out of three correct is zero points. And if you get zero out of three, it's minus two points. And no points if you do not guess. So in a four player game, you can do that for each player. So you can, you can guess all three of your opponent's secret recipes. And if you got all three of them right, that's four points each. And that is the whole game. Whoever has the most points wins. So you would count up any of your 50 point markers here and whatever leftover you have on the board. And that is everything. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this game. Or let me know if you've tried this game before. Thank you so much for watching.